so so far then we've covered um, all of the major scale mode, uh, minor modes Dorian Phrygian and Aeolian we've looked in depth at harmonic minor and also Phrygian dominant which is one of its modes um, from a scale perspective what about melodic minor well to the story of melodic minor in a very very simple terms kind of leads on from our story about harmonic minor so classical composers took natural minor they raised um, the minor third to a major third at the, at the fifth the chord so if we've got a minor a b c d e that's an e minor when they're harmonized and they raised the minor third to make it a major third so that they could get this cadence of which is the one they really wanted the sound of and they were left then with harmonic minor what they didn't like was the interval here they didn't like the sound of it so what they decided to do just has just like before was just to alter it again so to, rather than having that minor third distance of a tone and a heart you know a semitone they thought well we'll just raise that sixth upper semitone again so they ended up with these three notes as opposed to these three which they found more pleasing so effectively now the scale looks and sounds like so now not only did they have this the ability to use this chord and that cadence but they also had something that they found pleasing melodically to go along with it so therefore we had harmonic minor which you know developed this cadence and now we have melodic minor to allow for melodies to play over the top of which are much much more pleasing or were much more pleasing to the ears uh, and sensibilities of baroque composers these days it's just yet another scale that we can explore and, and use however we want to the way that a classical guitar player would approach it um, in strict form would be to go up and ascend melodic minor and then descend at any point through natural minor so we'd have something like this which is pretty cool from our perspectives unless that's exactly that's what you're doing you don't need to think about that and it was one of the things I found very confusing as a kid when I was trying to figure all this out before the internet um, finding books they said well you have to practice going ascending the, the uh, melodic minor scale and descending natural minor scale so I was not only trying to learn the patterns for melodic minor but I was also having to think well, where am I in relation to the natural minor as well so it was quite taxing and actually um, I didn't need to do that at all um, because what we do these days from uh, you know in terms of contemporary music like jazz and everything else really is we treat it as a scale a set scale so melodic minor is the same up and down ascending and descending and that makes it much easier melodic minor is also sometimes called jazz melodic because it's used really really widely in in the uh, in jazz and jazz fusion um, because of its interesting tonalities I think that's the bottom line it's it's uh, one of the more interesting scales certainly from a minor perspective um, and there's kind of like within it there's lots of interesting tonalities like whole tone and augmented stuff which is really useful in jazz because you can substitute um, dominant seventh chords with augmented chords and if you're doing that then it means you can kind of port yourself around the fretboard or harmonically in your compositions if you wanted to and that's one of the reasons why it's very popular and again because we've now altered a note in the scale to make it melodic minor we've effectively altered all the chords too so if we build chords you end up with these and uh, the first one is, is really interesting minor major seven uh, and you will recognize it if I play it in a certain way um, let me give you this kind of as an example it's 
got that real kind of James Bond vibe to it. And I was adding the ninth in there, which I think is on the is the original James Bond kind of chord. There's no escape for you now, it needs to bond. But minor major seven, yeah, it's got it's, it's gorgeous sounding. And if you um, have a look at kind of uh, Latin music as well, you'll hear um, this kind of pattern a lot, which is using natural minor, the natural minor scale and natural minor down to minor major seven, minor seven, and minor six. So you get this kind of. So don't think that just because um, it's an odd sounding chord, it's, you can't really use it. It's very, it's used all over the place in lots of different genres of music as well. And it's the same with all the chords. And as I was saying earlier, I think one of the beauties of, of uh, the melodic minor is that sitting within it, just how, just like how I saw diminish sitting within harmonic minor, sitting within melodic minor is um, whole tone or the, the ability to kind of start using the whole tone scale within it. And you can kind of see that if you look at its fifth mode is my favorite mode called Mixolydian flat six which is often referred to as the acoustic scale it's just another name for the same thing really and it's probably called about five or six other different things depending on whereabouts in the world you are and which genre of music you sit in but um, it sounds like this if I play it um, let's play uh, a melodic minor so the fifth mode of a melodic minor is E Mixolydian flat six, and it sounds like this. So it's got, I really love the sound of that. It's loads of kind of tension and release, and um, no, it's kind of it's eastern, but it's not quite it's completely eastern. I think you, uh, you can get a lot of. There's a lot of mileage melodically out of it, I think. And sitting just behind that is Lydian dominant. And so you get this kind of pattern here, which is very, very similar to whole tone. And the beauty of this is that if you can get into whole tone somehow from melodic minor, then you can start to move around every two frets, the same patterns. And wherever you land, you could treat that as the fifth and go back to a root that's below it. So it's a really cool way of portaling round different keys without, you know, no regard whatsoever to using dominant and subdominance um, in a typically classical cadence way. You're just kind of like moving round at will. So it makes your compositions really free. Anyway, you don't need to get too much in depth into that unless you're really into your geeky theory. The bottom line is, melodic mine, it's not difficult to play. Um, you should have a go at it and have a listen to the tonalities, but don't stress about trying to learn the whole thing across the whole fretboard until you have got your major scale and its modes down. Get that all down first, then you can start to have a look at harmonic minor and melodic minor, depending on your musical sensibilities, I guess. So there we are, I hope that's been a help to you. That's my overview of, of minor scales, kind of how I would teach them if you were sat in a room with me and we were talking about them and playing through them. Um, there's a wealth of information out there on the internet. I'll always you know, suggest going and having a look at as much of it as you can. There'll always be somebody that'll have a different slant on things and it might sit better for you if you, if you hear it from them or a book or you know, a DVD, whatever. We live in a world of you know, vast amounts of information. As long as you get the kind of basics right in your mind so you're not confused by all of that, then you can explore and, and do as much of that as you as you want to. So I would suggest doing that, but use this as a maybe as a basis to kind of keep coming back to grounding yourself, going, okay, I understand where, where natural minor comes from and how it was altered to make harmonic and where that fits into diminished a little bit and how the harmonic minor was altered to make melodic minor and then how you can kind of get from melodic minor into whole tone and all that crazy world as well. So um, yeah, I hope, I hope it's been of use to you and, and somewhat enlightening. Um, I wish I'd have had something like this um, available to me when I was starting to have a look around you know, different scales and different scale patterns. So that's kind of one of the reasons I've made this video and the previous ones. 
So um, yeah, if you if you enjoyed it, don't forget to, to sub to the channel, uh, share with friends, like it, and do all of that stuff for me. That's great. It lets me know that people are interested and want to learn more bits and pieces that I can show them, um, and it makes things worthwhile. So until next time, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope it's been of use. And uh, if you have any questions, just send me a comment and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Until next time, see ya.